is about a little over a pound. And then we're gonna add ground pork. It's a little over a pound, it's about one to one. Um, I just like the addition of ground pork. I think it, sometimes meatloaf can be really dry if you don't add pork or if you overcook it, it's just a lot more room for error. And plus, I just like pork, so I'm gonna use that. Um, so ground beef and ground pork. I'm gonna add, this is one and a half cups of chopped rice. This is leftover rice. In Hawaii, we always have leftover rice. Um, you can always use um, breadcrumbs or panko. Um, if you do, I would probably go about three quarter cup. Um, I don't want it to be too stiff. That'll just help us bind it together. We're gonna add one and a half teaspoons or one and a half tablespoons of granulated garlic. About one and a half teaspoons of black pepper. We're gonna add, this is sauteed, the sauteed uh, onions and garlic. It's about three quarter cup of onion and about, I would say four cloves of garlic. We just sauteed it really quickly, chilled it, and we just want that nice caramelized flavor in there. Yeah? So we're gonna add that. We're gonna add about one and a half tablespoons of shoyu, give or take a little bit. Worcestershire sauce, we're gonna add about the same, about one and a half tablespoons. Right. We're gonna add a little bit of Tabasco, one and a half teaspoons. Uh, if you don't like spice, you feel free, you don't have to put it in there. But we love the Tabasco over here, so we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna add some sliced green onion. Just for flavor and for color. And we're gonna add our two eggs. Um, basically gonna help us bind it together, okay? So I find the best method is to use your hands. Um, if you wanna use a spurs, move it. Okay, so we're gonna mix that together. And before we shape our, our meatloaf, we're actually gonna um, taste a little bit of it. So I'm gonna take a pinch of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna saute it real quick and see if the seasoning is there. Uh, that's the way you don't have to worry about it. It's not a guessing game. Recipes are guidelines, so generally speaking, I wouldn't trust any recipe. I mean, you definitely have to taste it as you go along, no matter where you're getting your recipes from. Okay, so it's been about 10 15 minutes that I had this chilling in the refrigerator. You can put it in the freezer if you want to do it faster. Um, I'm gonna put this to the side real quick. I'm gonna add, I have a pan with foil, but I also have plastic wrap. I'm gonna put it all the way over the um, Foil. You don't have to do this step if you want. Um, I just find that it's a little bit easier to do if you do it this way. Uh, let's clean up. Um, this process helps hold the shape as well. Okay, so I'm gonna take my bacon and I pulled the bacon out probably 15 to 20 minutes earlier. So if you can see it's soft and it's very easy to mold. That's important because it helps keep the wrapping tight on the bacon, which is what we want, right? Okay, so I'm gonna use Probably six slices for this amount. If you don't have enough, if you have less, just use less. It's okay. Um, you can put it as much or as little as you want. I just find, I try to keep it single layer because if you go to double layer, then it may not cook as well, right? So that's, I just want to catch the whole length of the, of the meatloaf, right? So again, make sure it's soft though. Make sure it's just a little bit defrosted. Um, again, it's easier to mold, it's easier to stretch. That way it'll help keep the meatloaf in shape together, right? Because if not, if it's really cold, it won't, it, it won't adhere to the meatloaf as well. And it may come off, which is, which is not a huge, huge deal. But you know, if you're gonna go through this process of doing it, you definitely wanna try to make sure it stays together, right? Okay, so as you can see, you can make it any shape you want. I like this too, because you don't have to put it into a, whether it's a bread pan or a nonstick pan or a, um, anything like that, because it can brown on all sides. That's one of the reasons why I don't like to put it into another pan. Okay, okay so I'm gonna start from one end. And if you can see that the bacon can be stretched 
just have to pull it tight, right? You have to be careful not to, not to rip it in half, but if you can see, it's very stretchable, yeah? All right? So basically, you're gonna go around. All right, and again, this will, a couple of things will help the meatloaf keep its shape. And also, I think it goes without saying, but adds a lot of flavor and a lot of, a lot of fat, actually. <laughs> It seems like a lot of bacon, but you're not gonna eat all the bacon on there, right? Really, you just eat a few slices of the meatloaf, and so you'll maybe get one, one piece of bacon per person, give or take a little bit. Okay. 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 That's how we do it. So not too bad, right? Okay, so at this point, I put the plastic wrap there, so we're able to Keep it together with that one. Alright. You kind of make it tighter, you can pull it tight. Again, this is for home use, so I, if it falls apart a little bit, don't don't stress about it. It still tastes the same when you put it in there. Alright. Okay. So I just pulled in the bottom plastic wrap and tucking that top one underneath just to help it keep its shape. And I'm gonna come over and just do the same, just do the other thing, do the same thing to the other side. Um, if you can't do this the day before, um, I would say try to do it at least 15, 20 minutes, you know, just let it set a little bit, let it set. But I'm actually gonna keep this overnight and I'm gonna do it for the next day. That's what I like about meatloaf as well. And a lot of dishes that, you, that I do, I try to make sure that I can prep them ahead of time. So when I come home the next day, I, after work, I'm ready to cook it for dinner and, you know, I just prepped for the next day. Okay, so now we have our meatloaf in the oven. It's at 375. We're going to go for about 45 minutes, but we're going to check it about 40 minutes. Um, we're just looking for internal temperature of about 165, 160, 165 with carryover cooking. Um, we're just going to make a quick glaze while we're waiting. So I got about a half cup of ketchup. Uh, let's, say, let's say that's about two tablespoons of honey. It's a one and a half tablespoons of steak sauce. One tablespoon shoyu. And just a couple of drops, maybe that's eh, two teaspoons of red wine vinegar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this around. This is a glaze and we're just gonna glaze right over the meatloaf, maybe five minutes before it's done. Just for a little bit added flavor. This added some sweetness, right? sweet and salty to the um, meatloaf. Because we're not gonna serve this with gravy. I don't serve this with gravy. You can if you want, but we're just gonna put that on for extra flavor. Hi. We just took the meatloaf out of the broiler. We just boiled it for about five minutes. And so let's cut it open and see what it looks like on the inside. So as you can see, a nice caramelization. caramelization. That's why we put that glaze on there, yeah? So let's cut, let's cut here. Let's take a look in the middle. Oh, it's perfectly done, yeah? So if you can see, that's why I like that. I like the pork, because it adds that liquid, it adds that fat, yeah? With just ground beef, it's hard. It's hard to have that. But with the half-half ground pork and ground beef, that's perfect, at least for me. Yeah. So thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you again. So our bacon wrap meatloaf.